When you're maintaining your iron cookware at home, what works better? Kosher salt or chainmail? Hi, I'm Jed. This is Cook Culture. So to anybody that follows this channel, they know the answer to the question I just posed is chainmail, or at least that's my opinion. But this past week, I was scrolling the gram and I came across a Bon Appetit post where there was a question about, you know, is chainmail the best tool to maintain cast iron and carbon steel cookware and stainless steel for that matter, but they were specifically talking about cast iron. And, you know, in my mind, I'm like, oh, of course, like, why would you even need to post something like that? But I was really fascinated to see in all of the comments that there was confusion and people that had talked about using chain mail but didn't like it and had gone back to using kosher salt and that kosher salt was the very best way. And there was a time pre chain mail being widely available in the form that it is now. Chain mail I'm sure has been around for quite a while, pretty sure. Uh, but chain mail has been made into a stainless steel, carbon steel and cast iron cleaner scrubber, uh, you know, it's become more popular lately, but it's actually been around for quite a few decades. Uh, but just in the last X amount of years, it's popped up all over the place. And a lot of the very high end cast iron makers either sell their own or do heavily promote using it. So I was curious, like, why would you not use chain mail when it, in my opinion, from all of my testing and from the thousands of customers that I've sold chain mail to vastly outweighs anything else that they've ever used that kosher salt included, uh, why would there be any confusion? So I, I went through the post, had an idea of where some of that is, and that's what I'm going to go over today. So first thing we're going to do is test kosher salt versus chain mail, and then talk about the differences in chain mail, because not all chain mail is created equal. So let's get into the kitchen. Okay, so I've got a pan here that is, you know, fairly worked. It's, it's seasoned, but it's got a good layer of carbon on it. Um, and so I'm going to do a, a, a quick warming of this pan because it's ice cold, this one, and then work one side with some chain mail and one side with kosher salt. So it is definitely recommended to use a warm pan in polishing carbon and cast iron. It just softens the surface and it helps get the food and the carbon off and not damage the seasoning. Uh, so we're just gonna do that. I'm gonna put a bit of water in it and we're just going to warm this pan and soften the interior. And then I'm gonna work one side with chain mail and one side with, with kosher salt and just see if some of this carbon buildup that we have on here of what we're gonna get off and if we're, what kind of damage maybe that we're gonna create to this pan. Here we go. Okay, so this pan has come to a boil. I've had it going for about a minute or so. I'm gonna take it off the heat, get a nice close up of the pan. I'm gonna do one half with chain mail. Uh, I'm gonna use a, a coarse 10 mil chain mail on here. I'm gonna use kosher salt on the other half and give them about an equal amount of scrubbing and see if there's any difference on each side of the pan. Okay, so this pan is dry but hot, and as you can see, it's perfectly clean. There is carbon buildup on this pan, I can see that, and I can actually feel it, not a lot. Um, my next test I'm gonna do is gonna have some food in it, but right now I'm just gonna split this pan as best as I can in the middle, and we're gonna use some kosher salt on one side and a paper towel, and see if we can get a little bit of carbon build up on here. We should turn this kind of brown. This salt should turn a brown kind of color. So as we do this, not really browning very much. But, you know, we're getting some off on here. Okay, so the goal here is to get carbon off. You know, and so when you're maintaining your pan, even when it looks clean, if it has any texture, that's going to be carbon on it. You want your pan to be like a skating rink. You want it to be, even in the corners, you wanna make sure that you've got all that, got a built on hardened food off of there. And if you have any sort of blackening coming off, that's carbon, that's, that's food. And you wanna work it until you don't get that anymore. You're gonna get staining, the pan's gonna turn a dark color. So that's totally normal. But any sort of food buildup, you wanna to try to get it off. Okay, 
So I've got 50% of that pan I've polished, and I've definitely got some carbon off. That salt is no longer white. Not a ton, but some. And we're going to empty that out. Okay, so pan back on the stove top. Now I'm going to use the 10 mil coarse uh, silicone centered chain mill. And I go on this side here. Okay, so the goal that we're going for here is that we're going to get carbon off and leave seasoning on. So seasoning is a layer of polymerized oil that stops your pan from oxidizing. That's the purpose of seasoning. Nonstick will come off of a small amount of that seasoning, like it will create a bit of slickness, but it's about the fat that you're going to use, right? So using a good quality fat that's going to work well for your job on a, on a decently seasoned pan is going to create a nonstick for you or as close as you're going to get to a nonstick. And then the right heat and making sure that all of the variables are correct as you're using it. And that is going to give you a nonstick finish. So building up layers and layers and layers of carbonized food is not seasoning. That's just built up carbon. And carbon and polymerized oil are two totally different things. And carbon, over time, weakens and hardens and flakes off and becomes flaky and doesn't add to a quality seasoning whatsoever. There's, there's no benefit to it at all. So built up food is bad. And a decent seasoning, simple seasoning, and multiple layers definitely helps because it will help if you do do acidic foods or you know any sort of, like if you burn something on a little bit more, it'll take more abuse. So if you have more seasoning, the better, sure. But really, you know, you can cook nonstick with one or two layers. It will work just fine. It won't be as, as strong, but it will do the job. So, you know, I've done about the same amount of time there with my chain mail as I have with my uh, kosher salt. Okay, so we've got the kosher salt and we've got the chain mail. So we've got a pan that looks very similar, but you can see a little bit more clarity when you're coming onto the, what is my right side, uh, it shows a little bit more uh, of the bare surface, or not bare surface, but seasoned surface, like uh, non-carbonized. And that's what I was trying to get off is the carbon. And definitely more of the carbon. This is food. This is not seasoning that has come off. This pan is still wonderfully seasoned and it's going to work just fine. And what I'm going to do right now is cook something on this that is kind of sticky and I'm going to kind of reduce the moisture and get some things stuck on there. And then again, we're going to clean that with chain mail and with uh, salt and see which one performs better. Okay, so I actually had a little bit of a harder time getting something stuck onto this pan than I expected because uh, it is a nicely seasoned, and I just polished this pan, so it's nicely seasoned, and I just polished it. But anyways, I've got some food stuck on here, so I'm going to use the, it's sticky too, I've got uh, some, yeah, I've got some maple syrup reduced on here and stuck on. So it, it's a colder pan, some heat would get this maple syrup off, but I'm trying to prove a point here. So getting this off here with paper towel and salt. And it's, it's coming. Some work. It's still warmish, so it's soft. It's just not hot. And 
and polishing that down. Okay, this one little bit is difficult and it's ripping up my paper towel. Okay, so wipe that down. Okay, so I got some stuck on stuff here and tore up my paper towel and messy. Chainmail. All right, it's like a buzz saw. Off. And how about we go help out the kosher salt over here? Get that up, cleaned up for them. Get that out of the corner. Give it a nice little polish while we're at it. Make it nice and smooth. Okay, nice job. So there is a nice smooth, so lots of, of carbon on there. I'm going to give that a rinse under the sink. Okay. And that is back to how it originally started. So pretty easy there. Maybe it's an unfair test. I'm not totally sure, but you know, that to me, this guy just mows through whatever and does not damage the surface. I will show you right now by what I mean. You've seen how hard on this side I was polishing over here on this side of the pan. This is the opposite of the salt side, so even more. Give it a good push into there. And now we're going to go over to the sink and we will take a look at that seasoning. Okay, so I gave it a really good hard scrub right in this spot here to get some of this carbon build up off because it's still, I can feel it with my finger. And we're down closer to the metal even though there is still uh, quite a bit of seasoning on there. So we've got our paste and we've got our wax on there. We're going to touch that there, get that on, and that can go all around. And we're going to let that just smoke. So that last big push that I went into that pan, that was unnecessary. I didn't need to push as hard as I did. But what I'm trying to show you is that if you have texture, you want to get rid of the texture. You don't want carbon buildup. Carbon buildup is just going to degrade and flake later on. There's still quite a bit in here. This pan, as I've been polishing it today, is getting better and better and better. And so it's just starting to come to a bit of a smoke right now. So we're going to just hit that like that. And it's just smoking. And then we're going to turn the heat off and we're going to let that fully cool and that is post seasoned and perfectly ready to go. And the surface still has carbon. That's carbon build up there on the side with the salt. And where I've polished really hard, you can see all in this space here, that doesn't have carbon build up. It's got some, there's some in the corner, there's a little bit back here. So I could go even harder in there, but that nice, slick, shiny surface right in there that I just post seasoned, that's what I want to get there. And I want to use my chain mail lightly on a daily basis to stop the carbon buildup where from my experience, kosher salt doesn't really work on getting carbon out and you get carbon buildup and carbon buildup and carbon buildup. It may be cleaning it, but it's not taking carbon off, burnt on food. Okay, so we've gone over the example of salt versus chainmail. I personally am a big fan of chainmail. If that didn't convince you that chainmail worked better, then go ahead, use salt. It works just fine. It just doesn't really work carbon off the same way. It will clean a pan, but it really doesn't work carbon down to get you to the perfect kind of glass finish that you really are looking for. But I have another example here of a field number 10 that is 
fairly abused here. It hasn't been really looked after. It's even got a little bit of, of carbonization. It's got some oxidation. It just really needs some love. People have been using this pan in our commercial kitchen and not been looking after it. So what I'm gonna do here is show you the difference of using two different types of chain mail and then how I would maintain this pan to clean it down and get it ready for being used. Okay, so I used the coarse previously there, but what I use most all the time is fine chain mail. So this is a three millimeter compared to a 10 millimeter. This 10 millimeter round, this is a three millimeter woven rounded loop. And what I'm gonna do on this pan that I have here is that I'm going to polish with this guy because it gets right into the corners and it does the details better. So I'm gonna show you that right now. Okay, so this is actually a cold pan. I haven't warmed this at all, but I'm just gonna get in there and polish this down. Go over the oxidized spaces, the carbon spaces. And you can see it starts to kind of get a little bit shiny in there. But I just work that carbon off. And what I find is that if I do this when it's cold, the carbon actually dusts off. So it, it's an advantage to do this when it's cold. And what you'll see, it's not actually in there, but it's here. So the carbon is coming right off. So I just, I'm not gonna have to do this all the time, but if you do have one, find one of your pans is getting a little abused, people in your kitchen haven't looked after it very well, you can get in there and work that carbon off with chain mail better than anything. And this guy really gets into there. This one here I find can work quite well for some of this heavy stuff. Like in, this is a, a heavier piece of carbon that I'm working on right here. And as you can see, this is kind of, see it's kind of brown and dusty in there. That's a nice big carbon spot. So what I do is just go all the way around it, but in the corner, I'm gonna get this guy too. Right into the corner. Polish those corners, because corners is where carbon loves to build up. It's, it's hard to clean with a lot of things, and carbon definitely builds up in the corner. So just work away, work away, work away. Okay, and carbon build up. There you go, that's just all carbon. Okay, and I could, with this quite, quite easily, get into the edges, go around the edges, keep that guy nice and polished. Now I'm gonna take that and give that a rinse. And then we're going to get that some post seasoning on the stove top. Okay, so that guy on the heat. And as you can see, well, the oxidation is gone. And there's still some staining. You know, and a tiny bit of carbon still on there, but a lot less than what was there before. And we get a little bit of our paste. You can use grapeseed oil just easily on this one too. And all around. And now we let that just cook on. a little bit of smoke and then that pan is perfectly ready to be to be used there we go nice sheen to that one so we're just going to let a tiny bit of smoke billow off of that pan and then it is right ready to go and that has been conditioned using chain mail and it makes that job wonderfully easy and it maintains that better than 
any other tool that I've ever used. Okay, so using a fine chain mail, using a coarse chain mail, chain mail in general, I find is the absolute number one tool to use because your seasoning is not overly fragile. You can be fairly abusive to it. If you use something hard like flaxseed, flaxseed be hardens too much. And when you go to use chain mail, you can actually peel it off. If you use things like tallow, it can be too soft. Tallow works fine for seasoning, but when you go to use something like chain mail, when you've got carbon buildup, it does all kind of combine and get a little bit gummy and your seasoning can degrade quite well. So I find like canola and grapeseed oil, the high heat seed oils work really, really well for seasoning because they bond properly, but they're still a little bit elastic that they take the abuse that you need for using something like chain mail to get the carbon off. You can get that carbon off of the pan to make it wonderfully slick. Um, but I find that using things like salt, it's just not aggressive enough and it's messy and using the paper towel with it is just problematic because it'll kind of break some apart and it's just a bit of a mess. So using chain mail is better than anything, widely available. You can get chain mail, Lodge makes one like so. Uh, you can find it everywhere that Lodge sells it. Uh, the, this kind of chain mail is from some of the, the major brands of the high-end type cookware, like Field particularly sells one of these. Uh, I know Smithy also sells one. I'm pretty sure that right now uh, Finex sells one. Uh, they're very widely available on Amazon. Of course, I sell them, but that's not the purpose of this video. Uh, this video is about just letting you know the absolute number one tool for when you're maintaining iron and also stainless. I didn't talk about stainless or show stainless today, but same deal. If you've got a buildup of stainless, chain mail works wonderfully. You know, it, it will on something highly polished patina the stainless. So, you know, if you're very, very particular about the way your stainless looks, then don't use chain mail because it will leave a little bit of peanut. It will dull in it just slightly. But once you've done it a hundred times, it's all exactly the same and it looks fine. I've been using chain mail on stainless for years and it works wonderfully well. So I hope that makes a lot of sense to you. I hope that kind of, in, in my opinion, from what I've tried to show you today, puts this to bed that, you know, salt, if you're using the right tools here, salt does not compare to chain mail. I did have one user that was complaining that they couldn't get into the corners properly with chain mail. Fine chain mail. Fine chain mail does that for you. And if I had to choose one of these two guys between a, a coarse and a, and a fine, I would use the fine. The fine I find is an everyday driver. I use it in my sink all the time. I use it for cleaning everything. And then when I really need to go to work, I use the 10 mil. So that's how the two of them combine. So any questions, any comments, please throw them below. Thanks so much. Take care. <music>